following video features 3D footage that requires the use of red cyan anaglyph glasses. Hi, this is the 3D Focus review of the Fujifilm W3 3D camera, the successor to the W1 camera. Now the first thing you'll notice, if you had the previous one, is that it's smaller, it's more compact. There's more of a, an emphasis on video with its HDMI output, HD video recording and stereo sound as well. So what are the core features of the camera? Well, you have two 10 megapixel lenses, which is going to allow you to take 3D photography and video very, very easily. You've also got a three times optical zoom on here as well. And you have a very bright 3D screen that does not require to wear glasses. It's three and a half inches as well, which is a lot bigger than the other one, and a higher quality as well. You have a parallax control feature just at the top here, which means you can adjust how far in and out the 3D effect can be after taking the photograph. You've also got individual shutter recording as well, so you can take one picture there, one picture there, and then merge them together if you want to take landscape, landscape shots in 3D. And you have the usual 2D photography scene presets like landscape, portrait, etc. So let's get started. Now, the first thing when you get the camera in your hands is like, if you're like me, you'll be really quite impressed with this glasses-free screen. Now, it's a lenticular screen, and it basically works by having something called a parallax barrier put over the top, which allows one eye to see each different image. Now, because it's auto-stereoscopic, it means that only one person can view the 3D effect at a time. Because the screen is larger this time, it actually makes quite a lot of sense to watch a lot of your content on this screen. In fact, I think you'll probably watch most of your content on this screen rather than a 3D TV because you probably haven't got one if you're like most people. That's really impressive, I have to say, the screen. So parallax control is a really good feature of the W3. Using this control up here, after you've taken a photograph, you can adjust the where the uh, images uh, sort of come together or go further apart, which creates that 3D effect. You can actually adjust how fast it goes in and out of the screen. And you can do that after you've taken the shot. And the great thing is, once you do an, a parallax adjustment, it will save each adjustment as a separate image. So it means that you haven't lost the original one either. Framing is important when you take a 3D photography with this camera, or with any particular 3D camera. If you take a subject that's going to come out of the screen, or uh, negative 3D is what they call it in the industry, you're going to want to make sure that the uh, all the edges of the objects are going to be within the screen because if they go get cut off by the edge of the screen and they're coming out of the screen, it's something called uh, edge violation. It's very uncomfortable. I actually don't like most things coming out of the screen. I prefer most things going into the screen. So with this, I just use the parallax control and that's pretty, pretty easy to use. Interval 3D shooting is a really good feature of this camera. It allows you to take one image and then move the camera very far away from the right or the left, take another image and combine the two images. And the reason you'd want to do that is because 3D effects on very far away shots only work if the lenses are far apart. So that's a really good feature. In fact, I'm going to show you how you can do that right now. Well, I'm in Richmond now to try and show you how to use advanced 3D shutter mode on the Fujifilm W3 camera to get a better shot if you're taking photographs of very far away objects. If I was to take a picture now of that landscape with that distance, it would look very, very flat. So I'm going to move the camera from one side to the other side to get a far better, deeper shot do that click on advanced 3d shutter mode just here that's going to allow me to take two separate shots i'm going to use convergence method which means i'm going to focus on a particular point so find somewhere that you can really clearly focus i'm going to focus on a boat over there take a back picture there now if i move it slightly you'll see that the image is still still there so that's going to allow me to line up the next shot so now now i'm going to move across find out where that boat is put the cross sail on that boat again take the next photograph. So let's move it camera right across over now. So I've walked about three meters now. I'm now I've still got the image. If you go in there I've still got the image. You can see it's a transparent overlay. So I'm gonna match those two up. Take the picture. Now let's have a look, see what it looks like in anaglyph. You'll see it's a far, far deeper shot. And then we're gonna compare that to a shot of just taking a normal Tumble picture of the two lenses fixed together, and you'll see a huge improvement. 
great thing about advanced 3D shutter mode is that you could take some close ups. So I took a picture of that. The lenses are way too far apart, it wouldn't work at all. So you can use this great function again. I'll click on to advanced 3D because it's close up. You want to make sure it's on micro mode. You really, the idea is that you want to move the camera lens only very, very slightly, otherwise, you're not going to get the effect. So let's take, let's focus on one area. I'm going to focus on that dot there. Move it across very, very, very slightly, probably about half an inch or something. Get that aligned. Now, let's have a look, and you'll see there's far more depth in that image right now rather than taking it just from the normal uh, 3D mode on the camera. How are you going to display the content? Well, there's three ways, and it's very easy to adjust the output from this camera. HDMI lead to a 3D TV, you select 3D mode and a 3D TV will process whatever it's way using the, using the images that's provided. The most likely way, and the, probably I should imagine the best way of viewing 3D content from this camera is actually on the glasses free screen. Or you can select side by side and it will send side by side images to your TV screen or you'll probably use that for something like YouTube 3D and using the YouTube tag you can view 3D content from the Fujifilm W3 in, on, on YouTube 3D using whatever the glasses or there's several different options for viewing 3D content. So viewing 3D content is pretty easy using the W3.
does not exist. I'm breaking up for you now. It, it's, it's just doesn't, it's not, it's just not going to happen. But saying that, there's different ways. <laughs> So you're going to view your content from the W3 camera well. Pretty simple, you take the card out. Now I have to tell you that the card should be a class 10, which is a quite a new version of the card for a faster speed. Anything lower than class 10, and you're not going to be able to take video clips, 3D video clips, longer than 20 seconds. That's a point worth noting. You can get them now an 8 gig SDHC card, class 10, for about £10 from Evo. You take that card, put it straight into your computer, and you've got your raw files. Now 3D photography are called MPO files and the videos are called stereo AVIs. MPO files are basically two images coded together. To view those and to manipulate those you can use the software included which is called My Fine Picks. It's, and I have to say it's not a very good piece of software at all. It's very very limiting. What I suggest is you can use something like Stereo Photo Maker this is free and you can get the link for my 3dfocus.co.uk. You can open up your MPO files like so open stereo image, you've got all your files there from your Fuji camera, make sure it's MPO that you're opening up because that's how the two images work and make sure that's selected to all files otherwise it might only be looking for uh, JPEGs. Click on that and now I have my anaglyph and I can adjust that in many ways. If I wanted to output that as a different type of anaglyph I can do here but let's say I just want a side by side image, side by side, I can do it like that. And the great thing about this is that you can adjust all the alignment as well. Very, very simple by using the adjust feature. Do all the alignments, left, right and everything. You know the advanced 2D mode I was talking about earlier on? You want to make sure the horizontal and vertical axis exactly bang on. That makes it very easy. You then save that as a file and then upload that to Flickr or whatever. So if you want to, you'll see some of my examples on my Flickr account. And then that's the best way. So what are my likes about this? Well, it's going to be the fantastic screen. As I said, I hope you have emphasised, you will be amazed by this screen. I defy anybody not to be very, very impressed with it. It simply works and it doesn't require you to be very, very rigid. I mean, you do have to be in one particular zone, but because you're naturally in that type of position, it's a, it's a perfectly great 3D effect. The lens distances is very good as well. Far, huge improvement over the 8 type because if you look really, it's pretty much how a, a natural, uh, the, the natural space between the human eyes and that gives you really quite natural 3D effects too. Very easy to use as well, very easy to shoot. Parallax control and the interval shooting are very great as well. One of my dislikes, well, unfortunately, the video quality is appalling. 2D video and 3D video. Now, if, I mean, it looks like mobile phone footage, and this is meant to be 720p HD. Too much out of the screen effect by default out of the screen 3D, as I said before. Anything in front of four meters will come out of the screen, you don't want that, you want to get far closer to people. Yes, you can adjust on the parallax control, but you don't really want to have to keep doing that every time you've taken a shot. So that needs to be changed as well, I think. The lenticular prints, now you can output files from this called MPOs, send them to Fujifilm or other companies, and they'll print out photographs, glasses free 3D photographs. Now to be fair, I haven't seen many, but the ones I have seen look incredibly flat. And not very good. So my conclusion is 7 out of 10 for this camera. The price is good, I mean it's come down now to about £330. It's a nice 2D camera, not that you buy it for that. 3D effect definitely works and it's a very very straightforward way and easy way and low cost way of getting into genuine 3D filming.
thank you for watching the Fujifilm W3 camera review. If you visit www.3dfocus.co.uk and search W3 camera review, you'll also find some links to my Flickr account, which will show you some examples of pictures I've taken using the camera. They will require you to wear anaglyph glasses. You'll also find links to the Stereo Photo Maker software that I featured in this video, which will allow you to take some, manipulate your 3D photography and output them to your Flickr account or whatever. And also the links to the Stereo Video Maker as well, which is going to allow you to upload to YouTube 3D. Also, if you want to buy this camera and you're looking for the best price, I've found out the best prices for you. You can find that out on the website as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.